good morning. It is um, June 2nd and uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, a little after 9. It's already getting really warm. I'm, I'm sweating. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and install some honey supers today on these uh, two hives behind me. Um, honey season is almost here. Uh, within two weeks, probably a lot less. We've had a really nice spring. It's been like summer like weather. The blackberries coming into bloom is what triggers the nectar flow in this region. Uh, blackberries are the first things to offer nectar in an abundance and once they start blossoming, that's mostly these Himalayan blackberries that we are overwhelmed with here in Washington State. Um, once those have nectar, then the bees collect that nectar, turn it into honey. And so we call it the nectar flow equates to a, what's called a honey flow. And uh, that will be happening, like I said, within the next two weeks, probably less. And uh, definitely want to have these supers in place a couple weeks before it starts. Um, a little less would be okay. If it started tomorrow, that would be fine. But uh, it would probably be at least a week anyways. But hard to say. Um, anybody watching this video, if you know more about Himalayan blackberries than me, which is a good likelihood, I don't know that much about them, um, let me know when, how long from bud to blossom. But they are covered with buds right now. And it's only the second of the... It's the 2nd of June. Usually it's not till about the middle of the month before we have blossoms, but they can start early uh, when the weather's nice and we've had nice weather. So I'm thinking, without knowing a whole lot about Himalayan blackberries, that we're going to see nectar flow real soon. So that's it. I'm going to get started here. And today we are using applewood smoke. Not that the bees care, smoke is smoke, but it makes the yard smell kind of nice. It smells like I'm uh, making bacon or a ham or something. And uh, I'm going to try and use as little smoke as possible. Minimal smoke is always better for the bees. So, uh, but sometimes just got to give them a little bit to help keep them calm. So that's what we're going to do. And remove these feeders and install the honey supers and uh, maybe do a little bit of quick inspection along the way to see if everything's looking okay inside the hives. I'm getting investigated already. These bees smell smoke in the air. They're checking me out. So. With that, I'm going to get suited up and get at it and try and give you some better angles of what I'm doing today, too. So, enjoy. Okay. So what you're looking at there, top of the box, this is the feeder. Feeder is empty. It was full of that syrup I was making, which is just basically a simple syrup. And I fortify it with some uh, nutrients that are good for bees, but not absolutely necessary. And I know for a fact that the cap that keeps the bees from getting into the pond of of uh, food is it needs some redesign and uh, because of that quite a few bees got past it drowned in here that I do have a lot of dead bees in there it's not thousands it's not even hundreds and there are thousands born every single day so it's not a huge detriment but it's still sad I will modify it I want to minimize drowning but that is very common for drowned bees around water sources food sources um, that said, anything I can do to, you know, mitigate that is in the favor of the bees, is in the favor of my beekeeping. Pop this lid off. We will be removing that feeder from this lid when I'm all done here today. But right now, I'm going to pop this lid. There's going to be a lot of bees on the underside of this cover. I'm going to set it on top of the honey box so they can find their way down into it as I uh, get things going here. But once the once the honey box is on top, we don't want the feeder in place anymore. If it's there for an hour or something, that's not a big deal, giving the bees time to work their way down, but we are done feeding them. You don't feed and honey super at the same time. You want to make sure that anything they put in that honey super comes from nectar, from flowers, not from sugar water that I've been giving them. So, anyway, here we go. They're probably going to come buzzing on out of here when I lift this lid. Yeah, get my tool out of my hand here. I don't want to tip. I want to keep this nice and level so I don't spill fluid that might be in there. There we are. So I'm just gonna have a quick look here. I don't need to take things apart necessarily. Uh, in fact, if I can avoid it, that's usually a good idea. But I just want to look at the comb that they've been building. Let's see, there's nothing I can really show you without going further into this. And again, going further into it, 
does nothing more than set them back a little bit. That's what I will do here. And they don't love this, but it's got to happen. There's pieces of what we call burr comb, these pieces of comb that they've built up on top of the frames. And uh, I should be throwing these in a bucket and saving them rather than just pitching them on the ground. I'll probably try and gather them up later. But uh, I get some of these out of here so that the new equipment I put on top will sit down flat. If it doesn't sit down flat, that causes problems. It creates escape routes that you don't want there. An escape route for a bee can also be an entrance for somebody who's here to rob honey. So I try to clean some of this stuff off, these high points. Like right here. And I'm doing this very carefully not to injure any of the bees that are working on this area. But I am very, very happy to see how many bees are in here. All these frames are loaded right on out to the edges. It is definitely time to give them another box, be it a honey box or just like I did last year at this point, was give them an additional uh, brood chamber so they have room to grow. But the hive is completely maxed out like this. There's no room for them to grow. It promotes swarming. They don't have enough room. They Half the colony leaves the queen in search of a new place to set up shop. And then I am left with half the bees and a new queen who's maybe not as good as the one that I previously had, the one that I paid money for. I don't want to lose her. Um, these girls are nice and calm this morning. This is very good news. I don't see anything in there to alarm me. This, these numbers look fantastic. The development of the frames looks fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and I, uh, I'm very pleased with how calm these girls are. I don't think I'm going to need any smoke on that second hive. Might not have needed it on this one. This is a queen excluder. So it's just a screen, screen door. And basically, it does exactly what its name implies. Like I said, the holes in this are such that all the worker bees can cross through it. The queen bee, she's just physically too large. She can't fit through it. So, just lay that right on top of the girls there. Very gently, so I don't squish anybody. Give them all a chance to move out of the way. In fact, I think I see a piece of comb that I want to remove. I'm going to lift this back up. Right here, this piece of comb. Come on, ladies, out of my way. Very gently scrape that off. I'll do this without harming anybody. They will abandon it here shortly. Shake them off. Whoops. And let's do one more right here that looks like it might be problematic. I was like, just go really slow and gentle. It's rapid movement when you're doing this kind of stuff that seem to get them riled up. If I don't do any rapid movements, I'll maintain relatively calm bees. You see, there's some airborne ones now, but a lot of that's because I just shook them off of the pieces of comb that I'm cutting out of there. So, so that's it for that. I put my tool back in my pocket here. I'm going to go ahead and set my honey box on there. So, what we want to do here, very carefully, because they will be crawling out here on the edges, it's super easy to accidentally squish these girls. You don't want to do that. I'm going to bring this in nice and slow. Just a sliding motion to make sure nobody gets guillotined in there. And then, again, as soon as it happens, let's do our best to not harm any of the bees. We want them all to live out their life naturally, doing what they are geared to do. Okay, well there it is. Honey Super is in place, simple as that. And I'm gonna leave that feeder on top for just a little bit because like I said, there are girls on the underside of that lid. They will work their way down into that box. I'm gonna wait probably a half hour to pop that off there and plug the hole. Oh, well, you know what? Let's take a look. There are probably dead bees in here. and I. Oh, well, not that many. How interesting. Learn something. Last time I looked in here, there were dead bees. But these girls have done a fantastic job of cleaning them all out. 
they've been there are actually undertaker bees it's their job to find the dead bees and remove them and they came clear up into the feeder and removed them that is a sign of a very sanitary very sanitary hive and that's really good news about this particular colony of bees so I'm gonna lift that off I don't want to dump the liquid down in there I'm just gonna spill that onto the ground a little bit we're gonna try and bump these girls out of here that will rile some of them up perhaps oh there's a lot underneath there we go we'll do one more of those the last of them out of there there we are wait for them to crawl down through that hole Sometimes a little bit of smoke can encourage them to go back in. Otherwise, we're waiting for them to climb down the outside of the hive. And it might take them a little while. A little bit of smoke. You see the activity they pick up. It definitely gets them a little riled. But in theory, they will race down to that hole. But like I said, in theory, they rarely do exactly what you expect them to do. Some they're going to cruise down the outside of the hive, that's fine. They'll find their way down to the front entrance and back in. But we want to get them off of here so I can put the roof back on. Look at her up here fanning. She's, she's alarmed. We're going to put the cap in the hole. The wood's a little swollen, so now it's a tighter fit. But We'll leave them alone. They will crawl down the outside of the hive and back into the entrance after a while. And they'll put that lid on. In the meantime, I can go ahead and get my strap back in place. And minimize all the noisy parts of this process. And get them done and over with. See, these girls up here now, they're a little lost. They're confused on where they're at. But they will ultimately figure it out. They follow their nose. They will find their way down the front of the hive and into the entrance based on the smell of the other bees. So let's we'll leave that like that. I won't tighten it up until I'm ready to put the lid on because I think I'm gonna position it further forward. Right now there's bees there. And they're going to clean up that water that's on top there. They always need water. That's just water that evaporated out of the syrup that dripped on the roof. So it's practically distilled water sitting in there uh, for all intents and purposes. They'll gather that up. They don't, they don't like to waste a resource, so they feel like they just found some water. That's good. Let them have it. Okay. Now reset some stuff here, and we'll get to work on that second hive. This is a different style of feeder. The whole top wooden box is, it has a plastic tank inside of it. And it's almost yep, it's guaranteed that there's bees trapped inside there. Quite a few dead ones, in fact. Which I hate to see the dead bees, but it's part of life. They've drained all their syrup out. But before they did that, some of them drown in here. This screen, I don't know if we can see that. Yeah, that screen down the middle there, it doesn't fit tight to the bottom all the way around. And because of that, some of them crawl down it when the levels are getting low and they crawl up on the other side and they can't find their way back. And uh, that's it, they, some of them drown in there. And because, let's see, I think I see an undertaker trying to remove a dead bee. They are very busy. I will shake all that out. They won't have to worry about it. As far as they're concerned, this is inside their hive and they're trying to make it sanitary. Uh, it's very wonderful that they're sanitary, but also, you know, Definitely sad to uh, have lost bees in the first place. We'll shake some of them off of there. And uh, interesting here too, propolis and comb, they've waxed this up. They're very busy. They're always trying to find stuff to do. So these holes in the screen, they didn't feel like we we're doing them any, per any good. And uh, they just started to seal them up. This is where I'm gonna want a little bit of smoke before I pop this off the rest of the way. Go ahead and 
give them a couple of puffs. A lot of people don't know what the smoke does for them. Um, they think it's like fumigating them or gassing them or something, and it's not. If you can hear that noise, they definitely kind of wild when they smell that smoke. They, it's a little bit of an alarm signal that they give. Something's wrong. And what happens when they smell that smoke is their instincts kick in. Bees operate pretty much completely on instinct anyways, like most animals. And uh, what happens, they smell that smoke. We'll give them a minute here to, to do what they're doing. But they smell that smoke, and their instincts tell them that there might be a forest fire nearby. So what they do is they start preparing for in the event that they need to evacuate the hive. And they will go down in there, and they will fill their bellies with honey in case they have to leave. They want to make sure that they have enough honey in them to do two things. One, survive their trip looking for a new home. And two, have enough honey in them to start building that home when they get there. It's going to require, potentially, it's going to require new beeswax, new honeycomb, new everything. And so that's what they do. Well, they go down, they got to fill their bellies with honey, nectar, and, uh, and then wait and see if the fire gets worse, gets closer, gets hotter. And after I'm done and they realize there is no fire, they will just put that honey right back into the comb. So nothing is lost, but it does trigger a bit of an alarm in the bees and uh, that's why we try to use as little smoke as possible because the less you smoke them the happier they are the more productive they are wow look at that they have built all that comb on the underside of the feeder lid I'll have to clean all of that out I'll shake as many of them out of there as possible they've got honey I just broke into a bunch of honey when I opened this up oh my goodness Oh my goodness, there's even brood, brood up in there. You're right there, I just, sadly, right there at the tip of my tool there, those larvae that I just broke open, those are brand new bees for me. So I just, in doing this, I just broke the brood chamber in half and I mean a piece of it. And so honey, I've opened up a working portion of the hive and sadly killed a few bees, but it's okay gonna be all right we're gonna clean this comb out of here all this stuff sticking way up high boy they really built up a lot of it we gotta clean all that out there's a lot of it start out here on the edge now all this stuff sticking up is gonna make it impossible for the queen excluder to sit down proper. One of the problems with me throwing all this burr comb and such onto the ground is that it's got honey and stuff in it. It can potentially attract, oh, that's, that's some honey right there. Getting sticky already and it has sticky gloves. It's gonna attract other robbers. It's gonna attract ants. I do need to clean it up. Now these girls will find it on the ground. Some of the foragers will find it and they might clean it up first. Or the girls from the neighboring hive here, the, the, the uh, Cascade hive I just worked on a minute ago. They're right next door. They might find it as well. Clean it up. It's fine. It's all good. I don't have a problem with any of that. What I don't want is to tell Critters, animals, other flying, robbing insects, other animals like raccoons and yeah. such, that there is a hive here, a, a source of food, because then they will come and be attacking this hive all the time, trying to steal. And my bees will be constantly on the defensive, trying to protect their pantry. Okay. Let's see, here's the big cluster. They are really involved in this one. It's got a lot of larvae in it. And sadly, that's... I'm trying to scrape without hurting anybody that's... a full-blown bee. But all this larvae is... going to go to waste. Come on. Yeah. They probably think I'm a bear get into their hive, at some point they will get defensive towards me. 
eventually. I'm surprised it hasn't really happened yet. But goodness, a lot of honey I broke into when I lifted that off. I knew it was glued down pretty good. It's a very good sign though. Seeing all that honey and seeing all that brood, it tells me that it's a very healthy hive. This hive feels a little more advanced than the other one as far as their production. Um, you know, getting them more room. It's definitely, I say, past due. I probably should have done this last week. I was toying with the idea of doing it last week, but don't want to do it too soon. Probably doing it too soon is that you can't feed them once you put that honey super on. And if you're not feeding them, and they're not finding nectar in the, out in the wild yet, well then, what happens is they're eating up their stores. They're actually undoing the work that they've been doing as far as their food goes. And you want to avoid that because you don't want them to starve. If they eat up all their stores, they got nothing left to eat, they will die out. Essentially, you've starved them to death by removing their food source too soon. Yeah. So it's a catch-22. Do you give them the more room that they need and stop feeding them? Or do you keep feeding them just a little bit longer? And I chose to keep feeding them just a little bit longer. I'm now thinking with that first hive, that was fine. With this one, it was Russian roulette. I, uh, could have ended up in a swarming situation. They are crowded as all get out in here. They're gonna love getting that second box. I'm gonna give them room to start doing stuff. They will, uh, this queen might be honey bound, meaning these bees have put honey in all the places where she would prefer to be laying eggs. And uh, that's problematic. But by putting a second box on, that should alleviate that. They will eat that honey up, feed it to the young, you can see this right here. A big puddle of honey right there. Big cluster of bees right there. And they are all drinking honey like crazy because I broke it open when I tore that off. That honey is mostly made from the syrup that I was feeding them. So, I think I can lay my queen excluder down. Oops, hello. Uh, you know what? I hate to do it, but I'm gonna have to scrape right through here. I've got to remove that. It's just sticking up too high. But you can see all that golden honey on there. And that honey is not the best honey. That honey is mostly made from the stuff that I was feeding them, the sugar water. It's, it tastes good. It's sweet. But it's not, it's not the good stuff. Not the stuff that, that we're looking for. up a little more of this. I think we are looking good here. I think we are ready to put that scooter on. Scrape a little spot there. A chunk of wax. Yep, yep. I think, I think we are there. Now, this queen excluder is one I used last year. You can see they've waxed up and propolized up some of the holes. It's going to smell like beehive. I don't need to clean that off. They will chew it out of there if they don't like where it's at. And they will repropolize it in places where they think that they want it. So this doesn't hurt anything. And just very gently lay this on top of them. Give them a chance to move out of the way of any place where they might be getting pinched. And they're pretty good. They got very strong thoraxes. It's actually, you'd think that it'd be a lot easier to accidentally pinch these girls because they are insects, but they actually, you give them a light pinch and they very quickly are able to move out of the way. So now, we've got this to contend with. Look at all of that. There's comb in there, there's honey in there, and I gotta take all that away from them. It's gonna be tricky. It's gonna be tricky. We're gonna give them a good old bang here. That gets them wild up for sure. I think what I'm gonna do is we lean this out here on the outside of the hive. 
and they will get a chance to climb up. But I will have to move it before too long because it is full of honey. Oh, if that shows in the picture there. Yeah, you can see there I just leaned it up. Their entrance is right around there. A lot of those girls will crawl up and find their way back in. But like I said, that can potentially bring uh, robbers around. It smells like honey. It smells delicious. That scent is in the air. What's that? Oh, some dirt I picked up from the ground here. Get that in there. They would clean it out eventually on their own, but why make them work? Why make them do something they don't need to be doing? Hey, just like before, I'm going to try very carefully set this on without squishing any of the girls. They are very worked up. I did a lot more surgery in this hive, cutting out comb than I did in the other one. I think there's a degree of alarm inside there. They feel like they've been assaulted by something. And let's see if I can't shake a few more of them down into the top here. Sometimes Sometimes a little bit of smoke helps. Let's see here. Let's see if we can't capture this. All those girls on the inside of there. We'll give them a little smoke. With any luck, that will cause some of them to run downward. Don't know. Looks like it's making them go more inside than down. I think it's having a counter effect. We beekeepers do a lot of guessing at what's going to happen. Make some of those Maybe the thing for me to do is to start scraping that in place so they don't have a, a haven in here. Yeah, they've really filled this with comb. Lots of natural comb drawn out in here. It's pretty amazing how fast they're capable of doing that. I'm glad to see that they want to build comb. I'll show you the insides of these frames here that I'm putting on. Use those plastic flow hive frames. And because they're plastic, they need to be coated with wax. The bees will do that when they're in wax building mode, comb building mode. But last year when I put them on, they still had a whole lot of work to do in the lower boxes yet because it was a virgin colony or you know an inaugural season for that colony. They didn't have the resources to wax up these frames by the time they got up to them. So instead, bees being busy hence the expression they uh want to do something in there because they just can't sit still bees do not sleep they don't sleep they're always trying to find something important to do when they can't be making honey or housekeeping or any other things that they do well then they're oftentimes just looking for cracks to seal up it's called propolizing they make glue or caulking from pitch and it's really nice strong stuff it's very sticky it's very orange those girls last year rather than making wax on this frames they propolize them instead which is not ideal it's not a horrible thing but it's still not what we want and uh i had to uh clean all that propolis out of these frames here just a couple weeks ago in preparation for today. Oh, so many larvae in here. Boy, that's another thing I gotta watch for. My queen, I mean, think about this. If there's larvae up here, then my queen could be in this top box. And I could potentially be trapping her on the wrong side of that queen excluder. I need to watch for her. I don't want to take a chance on accidentally injuring her. Injuring my queen would be a very detrimental thing. It's not good at all. I really wish I would have thought of that just a little sooner here. I don't want her to get harmed or lost on the ground. 
and all that is a possibility. And she was up here laying eggs in this weird comb. She could still be up here. Goodness, goodness. I definitely waited too long. I've created a potentially a bad situation here.